Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and I talk about all kinds of quilting and sewing related topics on this channel. So today I'm super excited that I have finally kind of compiled all my thoughts and I am going to be giving you my honest review of the Juki TL 2010Q sewing machine. I have had the sewing machine for five years and I have been using it all five years. It's my main sewing machine and I have one other that I use sometimes, but that's just because I need a zigzag stitch sometimes. So this machine is what I use for everything. All the tutorials that I've taught so far on this have been done on that sewing machine and I'm gonna give you my complete honest review on this. This is not sponsored in any way. I just really wanted to give a quilter's perspective on this sewing machine and I think it's important to get reviews from someone that's been using the machine longer than a couple of weeks or have just been sent the machine to review you know has been some people they've been generously given a sewing machine and then they're expected to to give a review on it and it's not always you know I don't think these people are being dishonest when they're giving a review but you know it's your your review can be skewed because you've been given a free gift I mean these sewing machines can cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars so if you're interested in reading my review about this I also wrote a blog post to correspond with this video and it's up on my blog now so I will include a link to that in the description below without further ado let's just jump right into my review I'm gonna be answering three main questions in this video we're gonna go over why I chose this particular machine what I would change if anything and do I regret purchasing my Juki TL 2010Q? Let's go over the first main question is why I chose it. I have several points underneath this question that I'd like to go over. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the brand. I knew I wanted to purchase a sewing machine that was from a reputable brand. I was, at the time, I was making custom quilts for people. I had an Etsy shop up and I was taking in custom orders. You know, I was getting multiple ones every month. So I needed a reliable machine that could handle making multiple quilts a month. And the quilts that I was making, they were very different from each other. It varied a lot what I was making. So I would make simple baby quilts from quilting cotton or I did a lot of memory quilts. So I'm working with stretchy fabrics and thick fabrics. There was denim in some of them and different things. So I really wanted a workhorse. That's the term that's kind of thrown around when talking about these semi-industrial sewing machines. I really wanted a machine that was gonna be able to handle all of that. So I did a lot of research I found this machine in particular had pretty good reviews though at the time it was about five years ago it was really hard to find <clears throat> a YouTube a youtuber that had done a review of the machine there was a couple I think the crafty Gemini might have done one I think I watched hers that's really the only one I can remember finding you know she isn't just a quilter so I really wanted a quilters perspective and that just was difficult to find so I was kind of, you know, when I was purchasing this machine, I wasn't 100% sure it was going to be the best choice. You know, it's a little bit of a gamble when um, jumping into buying a machine that's not specifically a quilting machine. <laughs> Long story short, I wanted a really good brand. And, you know, I had a list of brands that I knew that were good. There's Juki, Janome, uh, Baby Lock. Husqvarna, Bernina, you know, but I knew I wanted a good brand and I knew Juki is kind of the industry standard for industrial sewing machines. You know, whenever you 
get clothing that you purchase that's probably been made on a juki. Um, so I knew that they were going to be a workhorse of a machine. So it was just narrowing down what machine to get from there. So that's kind of why I chose Juki. I also chose it jumping into my next point because the Juki sewing machines were cheaper than the other brands. So I was on a budget you know, I didn't have thousands of dollars to throw at the sewing machine. My budget, I think I had saved up about $900, which was a lot of money. It still is a lot of money. And it's a lot of money to invest into a machine. And for $900, if I were to get a Bernina or Baby Lock or Janome, it wouldn't have been, you know, kind of that industrial strength sewing machine that I was wanting. Price was a huge factor for me in my decision making. This machine in particular uh, at the time was retailing, the price varied quite a bit, but it was retailing from about $1,000 to 1500 just kind of depending on what dealer you found and kind of maybe the included accessories. That was still on my price range. I had about $900 saved and I was kind of like chomping at the bit to, to buy one. I didn't really want to wait and save money for another month or two, you know, to be able to afford this machine. So um, what I did was I went on eBay and I know some people might think that that's kind of a red flag. Like, no, you do not go on eBay when you're trying to purchase a sewing machine. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get. It could be a scam, da 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 da. So, which is very, very true. And I, I definitely went on eBay with a lot of caution. You know, I didn't just go on and find, like click to the cheapest possible machine and then just go for it. You know, I did, I did my due diligence and I checked out all the shops and made sure that they had good reviews. And I looked at the pictures. I made sure that the pictures that they had posted were actual pictures. They weren't just stock photos of that machine. What I was able to do was I found a store. I don't know what they call them on eBay. Is it a store? Is it a shop? I don't know. But I found a seller on eBay that had the TL2010Q and they had it for sale for $700. And I was like, wow, that's like $300 off the base price of this machine. Why? <laughs> Why is it that much cheaper? So I read the description and basically it was a brand new machine that a sewing machine dealer got. They got this machine new, but it had a little tiny flaw in the paint. And when I say tiny, it was like, like the tip of my pen like a teeny tiny paint spot. I will show a close up of it here. That was why it was 300 bucks off, which I think is crazy, but I saw it as a huge blessing. So I purchased the machine and I got a really great deal on it. And it really was brand new. It came in the original box and everything was still, you know, professionally taped down and everything was perfect. So, I was very excited when I got that deal on the machine. Going on eBay isn't always a bad idea. I definitely recommend going in with caution and doing research on the shop and make sure that you really are gonna get what you're ordering. Um, another thing that you really should check if you are gonna order on eBay is if that shop accepts returns. So if for some reason you do get the machine and it's not working properly, or there's there's obviously something wrong with it, you should be able to send it back. So that's something that I definitely would recommend checking to make sure that they do accept returns. Now that we got the brand settled and the price, now I wanna talk a little bit about the versatility of this machine. So as you probably know, if you've been looking into this machine at all, the TL2010Q is a straight stitch only sewing machine. So what that means is it can only do a straight stitch. There are no stitch options on 
this machine besides changing the length of your stitch there's no there's no options there's no zigzag there's no buttonhole option straight stitch only I was totally fine with that because what I was going to be using the machine for is piecing quilt blocks and free motion quilting so that's that's what was really important to me and that's what uh that's why I was okay with getting a straight stitch only machine because that's really <laughs> only what I need. But the versatility of this machine is still fantastic because not only can you completely quilt or completely um, piece together your quilt top, but you can also do all kinds of different quilting with it. You can do straight line quilting, which is super fun. It's a modern look. You can also do free motion quilting with this sewing machine and the free motion quilting looks phenomenal with this machine. It does take a little practice as with anything else to be able to do it properly and for the stitch length to be correct and you have to figure out your speed and things like that. But free motion quilting is totally possible on this machine and it looks great. I really love doing free motion quilting. I don't do it as much as I would like because I'm just so drawn to straight line quilting because it looks so clean and crisp but I have done several different free motion quilting designs with this machine and it looks really good. So I love that versatility of the machine. Another way that this machine is versatile is you can sew all kinds of stuff with it. Originally, I think it was meant to be used kind of as a garment making sewing machine. You can make pretty much anything as long as it just needs a straight stitch. So if you're piecing together a dress or some pants, you could do that with this. You'd probably need a serger to kind of finish off those edges for actually piecing together the garment. This works great. This machine also stitches awesomely like like butter through denim. I've done a couple of quilts where I've had thick pieces of denim and because uh, it's like a memory type quilt so so a family member would want um, maybe like a piece of their dad's favorite pair of jeans or his jean jacket added onto the quilt somehow. I was able to do that no problem at all. You can also use it with leather as long as it's not like a super thick leather. I haven't tested it with leather just because I don't really work with leather but um I have seen on some forums that people have used it for leather and it does work so if you're doing some simple uh leather crafts then this machine can also do that so I really like that this that you can use this machine for all kinds of different types of sewing projects so if yes you like to quilt but you also like to make clothes and you like to make home decor items and different things like that this machine can do all of those and it does it really well so that's why this machine is versatile even if it only does straight stitch it's still a versatile machine and i really want to stress to you that you do not have to get the quilting machine that has all the bells and whistles on it. You do not have to go into debt buying a $5,000 quilting machine to be able to make beautiful quilts. You really don't. You don't even have to, you don't even have to pay 700 bucks or a thousand bucks on this Juki TL2010Q. You don't. I was able to make beautiful quilts with my Singer Patchwork sewing machine, which cost $250 at the time. That was like six, six or seven years ago. So I think it's even cheaper now. But you can make beautiful quilts with a cheaper machine like that. And I just really want to impress that upon people because I think a lot of people are almost guilted into feeling like they need to be spending you know at least a thousand bucks on the sewing machine or it's not good quality and that's just not true it's not there's a reason why Singer sewing machines have been around for as long as they have or brother sewing machines have been around as long as they have um 
I think a lot of quilters think that like Singer is somehow inferior. We don't really know why but it's just kind of a belief system and it's just not true. Singer is a great brand and you can make gorgeous quilts with a Singer sewing machine. So I just wanted to throw in that little tiny tidbit. It's a it's a little pet peeve of mine when I hear quilters trying to and not even it's not just quilters it's also you know other sewing enthusiasts just trying to push these extremely expensive sewing machines on people that aren't you know this is just a hobby for them if you're able to afford one of those five thousand dollar sewing machines then that is awesome and go ahead and get it if that's what you want go ahead and get it but I don't think anyone should feel bad if they can't afford that. And that's kind of how, I think that's how I felt when I was starting in the quilting community. I felt really bad that I couldn't afford something nicer. When I was going to find this machine and I was looking around for, for a good deal on something, I felt bad that I couldn't afford, you know, that uh, really nice Janobi quilting machine. You know, that's made specifically for quilting. Or a Bernina. I I would love to have a Bernina, but it's just not in my budget. It's not now. It wasn't then. And I shouldn't feel bad about that because I'm still able to create beautiful works of art. I'm still able to make my beautiful quilts with the machine that I got for a really good deal on eBay. <laughs> so anyways, okay on to the next stuff. The next stuff I'm actually going to switch the camera around so we're actually going to be looking at the sewing machine so I can kind of show you um, everything to do with the speed, stitch quality, the auto thread cutter, and some of the included accessories that came with the sewing machine. So let's switch the camera around and we will check that stuff out. Okay so here is the front of the sewing machine and we are going to first talk about the speed of the sewing machine. So this machine can go up to 1500 stitches per minute which is very fast so and I think the starting stitches is down at 200 stitches per minute so I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like. So let's start with the 200. This is the stitch speed lever right here. There's a little turtle. Well, it's a tortoise, I guess. The tortoise and the hare. So there's a little tortoise symbol down here, which means super slow. And then there's a little hare, the bunny rabbit, up here, which is super fast. So we're going to start at the 200 just so you can kind of see what that looks like. So that's pretty slow. Then let's go to the middle mark, which is going to be about 750. And then up to our 1500, let's see how that goes. 1500 stitches per minute. So that's pretty fast, right? Pretty cool. So there's our stitches. Beautiful. But so I really wanted something that was fast and this machine definitely is fast. So next we're going to talk about the stitch quality. It kind of goes hand in hand with the speed in my mind anyways. So as you can see in the example that I just did, the stitch quality does not change with the speed change. So as you can see, there's when we went super slow at 200 stitches per minute, all the way up to our 1500 stitches per minute. The quality is the exact same, perfect every time, perfect length, perfect tension, nothing's pulling. And I will tell you with the stitch tension, when I first took the machine out of the box, 
the tension was a little wonky. I had to play around with it a little bit and you do so with uh, turning these dials here. It just kind of helps with tension and I also messed with the presser foot tension as well and you just kind of got to figure out what works best for you and but then once you figure it out it's you're golden that's it <laughs> I, I don't think I've messed with the tension at all since I said it and that was five years ago <laughs> literally so it doesn't change over time it doesn't somehow get knocked out of place or anything so that is super helpful Next, we're gonna talk about this little button right here with the little scissors on it. Now, this is for the automatic thread cutter. And you, if you haven't had a sewing machine with this feature on it before, you do not know what you're missing. <laughs> uh, but once you get one with this button, then it's like, it's just depressing going back to your other machine that doesn't have it because it's so convenient. So basically what it does is there's a little blade down inside this part of the machine that cuts the thread when you're done. So here I'll show you real quick. If I just stitch, I'll slow my stitch down a little bit there. If I stitch and I decide, okay, I'm done. Or if you do your back stitch and now your stitches are complete, then you push this button and listen. That was a little blade going chop chop. And now I lift my presser foot up and the stitch is cut. So, and there's, you can see the two threads there on the bottom that were cut. So that's a super handy feature. Um, that's not something that was a deal breaker for me, but I was excited when I found out that this, this machine did in fact have that because I wanted to try it and I love it. We also have a lever here that lowers your feed dogs. So your little feed dogs are these little teeth things that are underneath your presser foot and they go like, they move like this. <laughs> and that feeds the fabric through the machine. So when you want to do free motion quilting, for example, you would move this lever over and now those feed dogs just lowered down into the machine and now they won't be feeding the fabric through. So as I'm, if I'm free motion quilting and I'm doing loops or something and I'm going like that, I'm not fighting those feed dogs to move my fabric properly under there. So that's another really great feature that this machine has and is pretty necessary if you wanna do free motion quilting. If your machine doesn't have the lever to lower the feed dogs, a lot of machines now come with like a little cover, a little plastic cover that you pop on over the feed dogs that basically does the same thing. Those are some of the little bonus features that are on this machine that make it really great for quilters particularly. Something else that is really great for quilters is this throat space. So the throat space, it's also called a harp space. The throat space is huge. I mean, it's humongous and it, What's the reason why that is important for a quilter is if you're quilting a large quilt and you're moving along with the quilt, see how that fabric's bunching up? Obviously this isn't a quilt, but a quilt would be gathering up in this space. And if you're using a smaller machine that has a smaller throat space, it gets really crammed and it makes it very difficult to do quilting as you're going along with the quilt. So this has a really large throat space. Let's measure it real quick. We've got from the needle to the body is eight and a half, eight and a half inches. And then from the table up is six inches. So that's a huge space. So I've actually quilted a king size quilt with the sewing machine before and it was not difficult. I did not have problems with it bunching up. Ouch, <laughs> I just hurt my finger. <clears throat> I did not have problems with it um, bunching up in the throat space area or anything like that. So that this was very, very important to me too. That was one of the main factors that helped me decide on this machine because it has such a large throat space. 
for quilting because I didn't want to send out my quilts to a long arm quilter. I really enjoy the quilting process. I think it's it's very therapeutic and it's very fun. I, I feel like I'm really able to be creative with it and every quilt that you quilt looks a little bit different and is a little, it's one of a kind. You know, it's not being done just by a computer or by a machine, but you're actually doing it yourself. And that's really important to me. And I, I, I really enjoy that. I like the artistic abilities that it gives me to do free motion quilting on my own. That's another reason why I love this machine. Now let's talk a little bit about the accessories that come along with the machine. Mine came with a, a standard quarter inch seam allowance foot which I use for piecing my quilt blocks. And it is very sturdy. All of the Juki sewing machine feet are very sturdy. They're not, um, they don't feel cheap at all. So they're very nice. The other stuff that came along with my machine were I got two different um, free motion quilting feet, a walking foot, I love the walking foot for straight line quilting. So the walking foot has little teeth on the bottom that line up with the feed dogs of the sewing machine. So they kind of, the teeth bite into each other, for lack of a better word, bite into each other and pull the fabric through evenly. It's also called an even feed foot. And this really helps when you're doing straight line quilting on a larger quilt. So there isn't any bunching or anything. These teeth really work together with the feed dogs to give you a really smooth, really nice straight lines for quilting. So this is super, super, super handy. It's, it's quite heavy. Um, I've, I've used other walking feet before that are kind of like a universal walking foot and they just, you can kind of tell it's kind of cheapy. And, um, but the Juki one is really, really nice. I really like that foot. I also got, as I mentioned, I got two, oops, two different quilting feet. So the only difference between these feet is the actual little foot part. So this one's kind of a wider, circle. So this is one I use the most for my free motion quilting. And then that one has a kind of a smaller circle. I'm not really sure why they're different. Um, if you know, let me know in the comments below because I don't know. I don't know why they're they're different. And I don't know why I like this one better. I, I just do. So... <laughs> That's the beauty with quilting. You just kind of figure out what, what you like, what works best for you, and then you go with it. So I got those, which are very, very handy. I also got a little pack of needles that work with the machine, some extra bobbins for thread, and a few other random feet that I've honestly, I've never used because I just don't use these, but... I think this is like a blind hem foot. And I don't know what this this little guy is. But it has a little moving part. So I'm not sure. But anyways, you get some accessories, but not a lot. I know a lot of sewing machines, you get a lot of accessories. So maybe that's that could be a downside, I guess, for some people. If you're not getting all the accessories you would like to get. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So we have covered the brand, why I chose this brand. Um, and then we kind of covered the reasons why I specifically cho chose the TL2010Q. So that throat space, ability to do free motion quilting. It's fast, it's simple, and it's a workhorse, really, it is. Um, it, it, I've used it for five years and I've never had issues with it. I've never had to take it in for maintenance and uh, it's it's great. You know, as long as you're oiling it properly, which the manual has a really nice diagram in it that shows you how to oil it properly. Yeah, it's, it's a really great sewing machine. 
honestly. So now we're going to talk about what I would change if, if I could. If I could change some stuff about this sewing machine, let's discuss what I would change. First and foremost, I would change that it is, is a straight stitch only machine. <laughs> I know I said that was, that's all I need for quilting and yada, 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 you know, but it would be awesome if it had a zigzag stitch feature. And that's the only, that's the only stitch that I, I wish it had. Honestly, you know, I don't need all the different decorative stitches. The decorative stitches are really fun and cute, but you know, I have my other machine that has that capability. So it would be really great if this could do a zigzag stitch because I do quite a bit of applique. I do raw edge applique. So I need that zigzag stitch to hold down those edges and you know, this just can't do it. So that is probably the biggest bummer of this machine is it doesn't have the zigzag, but it wasn't a deal breaker because I have a machine that does have zigzag stitch on it. So, and another thing that I would change is the lighting. So I have a ring light on right now, but let me turn this off really quick. Hopefully you'll be able to see, but yeah. So see the lighting on this is not the best, you know, you kind of wish there was more light over on this side. It's quite a, quite a bit of light right, right here, <laughs> but I'd kind of like to have some light over here. Threading the needle isn't difficult for me. I can see it fine, but I can see how that would be a struggle for people with the, it's, it's quite a big shadow on this side. And, um, yeah, so that, that's something that I've seen a lot of people complain about and totally understandable why that would be something that you would want. Now you can purchase like an external kind of like a strip light thing where it's got a sticky tack on it and you can just stick it right here and then it plugs into whatever an outlet or USB thing and those are quite popular and that would work really well. So um, if you're interested in one of those, I will link that in the description below. If that's something that would hold you back from getting this machine, just know that there are options for you. So you could use this machine still. And last but not least, something that I would change, maybe not particularly with just this machine, but for the Juki semi-industrial machines as a whole, I would change that the, um, accessories weren't so expensive. <laughs> now I know you're getting a quality product. That's not an argument. We know, we know that we're getting a really good product, but it is kind of a bummer when you need a specific foot for some kind of project that you're doing and you have to pay 50 bucks, 75 bucks on one sewing machine foot. So that happened to me when I was working for a company where I was shooting videos for some free motion quilting rulers. And I was using this machine for all of the videos, but the free motion quilting ruler foot that they sent me didn't work with my machine because my machine's a semi-industrial high shank machine. So I had to scour the internet and find one that would work. And I do believe it was 50, 50 or $60 for that one foot. Now I use it quite a bit, but that's quite a, quite a heavy price tag for one sewing machine foot. So that would be one kind of downside. And that'd be something you should think about when um, figuring out your budget. You know, if, if you definitely want to use something like that or an invisible zipper foot or something, you should um, keep that in mind that that's going to cost extra probably because it's not gonna come in the accessory pack with the sewing machine. So now let's talk about, do I regret buying it? So, do I regret buying it? <laughs> That's a really good question. And, you know, had I saved up for a couple of more months, I could have saved up enough for, you know, one of those really beautiful Janome machines or Bernina. But do I regret purchasing the Juki sewing machine? I would think the answer is pretty obvious, but no, I don't. I don't regret um, buy buying this machine at all. 
it has gone through all of my quilting projects with me and I've literally never had an issue with it. You know, I've had some operator error issues <laughs> where I've broken a needle or I've gotten thread jammed underneath, which, you know, that's going to happen with any sewing machine, no matter how expensive it is. But, um, yeah, I, I really love the machine. It was the right price point. It's an extremely reliable machine. It came with almost all of the accessories that I needed and it, it works great. I love it. It, um, it's something that I'm going to have, you know, I'm assuming for a few more decades and it's just going to keep on working. Probably going to have to take it in for maintenance at some point, but I haven't so far. Five years in, pretty good. So I do not regret getting this machine and um, I really hope this review has been helpful for you. If you want me to do more videos on this machine, I can show you how I do my routine maintenance on it. I can show you maybe some troubleshooting stuff that you might find. Just let me know in the comments below if there's any questions you might have where I could do a video where I answer questions that you have about it. And I'm definitely planning on doing an entire series on how to do different quilting with this machine. And I'm super excited to show you guys how to do that because it is totally possible for you to do beautiful quilting motifs with your domestic sewing machine. And those tutorials are not just going to be for this machine specifically. You can use those tutorials and things that I'm going to teach you to sew with a regular domestic sewing machine. And I can't wait to show you how to do that. So... If that's something you're interested in, please uh, consider subscribing. And if you found value in this video, please give it a like, a thumbs up. That helps me. It lets me know that I'm making the right kind of content here. <laughs> I'm really trying and I really hope this was helpful. If you are considering buying this machine and if you have any questions about it, you can leave a comment and I will answer your questions. Reach out to me on Instagram and I'll answer questions. I'm happy to answer honestly about stuff. You know, this machine might not be the best for everybody. And that's totally understandable. But um, yeah, if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything, just let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye.